Hey guys, can you see me? I'm way back here because back here, that's the brand spanking new 2016 Honda Civic. And over here, we have the current generation of the Civic, the 2015. And right here, that is the Ford Focus. It competes directly with the Civic. So does the Mazda 3 and of course, the Toyota Corolla. And we're gonna take all these cars for a ride and see how they compare to the new Civic. And that is coming up right now on the fast lane car. And by the way, it's just me. I don't have a photographer with me, so this is gonna be a little rough. So buckle on down. My gosh, compared to the new Civic, this current generation is uh, relatively stodgy and economy car-like. I think the fact that the new one is three inches longer, lower and wider, just gives it that really nice sporty feel. This Civic on the other hand, this does not scream fun, but let's see how it drives. I'm thinking that there's a reason that this is the best-selling car in the segment. And of course, that reason is Honda's engineering prowess, right? They always manage to build cars that are bigger on the inside than on the outside. They manage to build cars that are honest. And I think this generation of car has all those qualities. What it doesn't have is that fun to drive. Oh, it's slow. Come on. It just will not get out of its own way. I'm not a big fan of this dual dashboard. Just too much information. Not easily comprehensible. While the ride is good, the height, as you can see with the sunroof, is not. At least not for somebody who's 6'2". So yeah, this is the kind of car that uh, I would expect a college student to drive. Maybe a first car for recent grad, high school or college. Maybe an empty nester kind of car. Oh, there's a little tire squeal. But certainly nothing that would get my heart pounding. Oh, come on, stop groaning, just go. Yeah, yeah, it's a uh, very good basic transportation, but fun to drive, sexy on the eyes, and lust worthy. These are not terms that I would use to describe this car. And by the way, this is just a very short, quick drive of all these vehicles, simply because I don't have enough time at this program to actually do more than that. So I'm doing the best that I can in the short amount of time that I've got. So yeah, I'm not taking them out long. No. I wish I had more time, but doing the best I can given the short amount of time. All right. And you are Roman, right? I am Roman. Yeah. I am Roman. That's All day I'm long. <laughs> <laughs> All right, All I'll right, be right back. Man, have a good one. Thank you. Yep. I like to see that the Focus has, has a sport mode. So it's in the sport mode. And unlike the Civic, you can actually manually shift it with your thumb over here, which isn't such a bad thing after all. You know, the Focus has always impressed me as being the most European of these compact vehicles. And that's probably because it is the most European. It's basically the European Focus brought to America with a little bit of chrome here and there. Um, and compared to the old Civic, this car is a lot faster. It's got a traditional automatic transmission and it's a little bit more fun to drive. It's a little bit more sprightly, it's a little bit more lively, it's a little bit more engaging. Uh, steering's kind of eh, numb. Uh, seating position is good. The controls are, well, they're very forward. If you like sync, then uh, you will love it. If you hate sync, then you will hate it. But in general, this car has that kind of European DNA and pedigree, which makes it uh, 
not fast, but certainly lively. Now the question is, how does this Focus compare to the new Honda Civic? Because Honda says that the new Civic has been designed on the Autobahn, or at least derived from engineering tests done in Germany. I know everybody's holding the damn Nuremberg ring as their standard for developing car handling and response. I wish they'd develop it for America, but that's where we are. Everybody's kind of using the Nuremberg ring as a way to um, benchmark what cars should be like. So, out of all the cars here, this is the only American car here. This is by far the most European. All right, I'm in the Mazda 3, and Mazda's an interesting company because they don't get the respect they deserve. They build very good, very interesting and fun to drive cars. And for some reason, at least in this country, they're having a hard time getting traction. ask me why that is, I would say probably it has a lot to do with the fact that they have a very small dealer network because Mazdas have always been perhaps the most engaging cars and in some of the segments that they compete in like the Mazda 6 specifically I think it's not only one of the best looking but one of the best handling cars in that segment so let's see if this Mazda 3 lives up to that Mazda 6. Oh yeah you can hear the engine rev much more engaging than the old Civic much more lively. You just feel the road. You have the kind of steering dynamics and driving dynamics of this car compared to even the Focus are just a little bit sharper, a little bit more zippy. It wants to be tossed. It wants to go around a corner fast. It wants to squeal its wheels. <laughs> I like that. Yes. Yes. All right. I like that. And you know, the interior is nice. It's very modern chic if you were to ask me. This piano black lacquer is nice and you get a lot of car for not a lot of money when you get the Mazda 3. So I think in some ways this is the benchmark that Honda might be wanting to aim at, at least from an enthusiast point of view. But of course they're going for car buyers. You don't sell over 300,000 units a year by selling to enthusiasts. And maybe that's also the issue with the Mazda 3. This car is definitely derived and aimed at the enthusiast like myself and so maybe that's why it's so close to my heart all right well let's jump in the next car and see how it compares you know what can i say about the toyota corolla that you don't know it's the second most popular car in this segment after the uh, civic i'm gonna put it in sport mode You know, people have often called this the appliance of the segment because Toyotas are known for being dead reliable and being, well, <laughs> dead in terms of driving dynamics. And that's not a fair statement because you don't sell this many units and you don't have a reputation for building some of the most reliable cars by building refrigerators. So let's see how it drives. All right, getting on the gas. Come on. There it goes. Yeah, it's leisurely. And the interior, while it has that same kind of lacquer black that the uh, Mazda had, it's just not as inspiring. It doesn't have that kind of design panache. Everything is at hand. Everything is easy to get to. It's logical. It's well laid out. But does it stir my heart? I fear not. Let's make this turn. Let's see how it compares. When I, get on the, when I get on the juice. There is a little bit of life in the old girl. Let's face it, these cars are mainly about fuel economy. And if you want a car that is dead reliable, fuel efficient, and uh, 
just easy to live with. The Corolla is it. If you want a car that's going to stir the soul with excitement, even though the redesign in here, especially with these dual colored seat, has added some visual panache to the vehicle, it's just not. It's just not the sports car of the group. You know, Mazda is that. So we've done the competitors. We've done them fast, and now it's time to get in the seat of the new Honda Civic. Let's see how it compares. All right, here we are, the new Honda Civic, and immediately this feels like a sports car. You sit low, and that's because you are low. Honda has lowered the seat height so that your hips are lower. The car is three inches longer. It is wider. Everything is much more sporty. It's got that kind of sports car stance to it. And uh, I'm gonna put it right in sport mode. kind of funky dual dashboard so now it's just traditional lineup and uh, they've added a turbocharger a 1.5 liter turbo that puts out 170 plus horsepower so uh, it is one of the more powerful cars in its class that's all good the bad letters CVT and I'm not a fan of CVTs I think that CVTs and sports cars are kind of like oil and vinegar the two just don't get along because a CVT feels like it's moving me further away from the driving experience it feels like I've got a pillow under my right foot I hate the droning and of course this is going to emulate a traditional automatic transmission when I floor it so you can hear those shift points and it is powerful and it is fast, but I wish they had a regular manual or an automatic in the turbo. And you know what? I think they are. When the new Type R comes out and the SI, then we will have those options. But in general, Honda has really, really done their homework in terms of this chassis. Out of, out of all the cars, by far, it feels the sportiest, even sportier than the Mazda now. It feels the most modern. And it feels like I've got the most value for my money. So I feel like I'm getting a lot of money in this car. You know what? I'm going to go a little farther than normally I would because obviously this is a car that you're all interested in. So there are two engine options. There's a 1.5 liter turbo and then there's a 2 liter normally aspirated. And the 1.5 liter turbo is the higher end of the model. There are five different models topping the range with a Touring Edition. All the cars got a lot more safety equipment, so they brought a lot of the stuff that you see in higher-end cars like adaptive cruise control into this segment. But of course Hyundai is going to have done that. And actually the Touring model even has heated seats in the back. Yeah, I know. A Honda Civic with heated seats. And get this! A Honda Civic with dual exhaust. You can't see them, they're hidden. Because once again, it's all about fuel economy, right? That's why they did this. That's why they made this car with the CVT, because they wanted that magic 42 number on the highway and the 35 combined number, which is really good. Of course, the reason they installed the CBT is because the segment isn't about performance, at least not in this car, maybe the SI and the Type R, but it's about fuel economy. And this car gets 35 mpg combined, I think 42 on the highway, and that is very good for what has become a very large car. Yeah, I remember when these cars were small, I had the first CVC, that was my very first car, so my heart is kind of in the game here, uh, and that was a tiny car. But if you want that tiny car, you've got the fit now. This has really become more of a mid-sized car, so it feels the most mature, it feels the sportiest, and I have to say that on this very quick drive, and keep in mind that I am going way out on the limb because I've only driven this car for a few minutes, but just going one, two, three, four, back to back, I like this car the best in terms of its um, driving dynamics, in terms of its transmission, 
Well, you know what I feel about that. As always, this is Roman reporting for the Fastlane Car. Thank you very much for watching and allowing me to do these videos. I really appreciate it. And don't forget to check out tflcar.com for more news, views, and of course, real world reviews. See you next time. Ciao. Oh yeah, click on me if you want to watch more 2016 reviews because we've got a load of them and that'll take you right to our playlist and you can check out all the new cars first. Yeah, and subscribe, please. See ya, bye.